And welcome, everybody. It's your Friday. Boy, it's Monday. See? Good start already. Nooner with me, Dave Lamont. You know why? Because I don't have to go to school tomorrow to work. So I already think today is Friday. And delighted you could be here. I've got two special guests that will be in just a couple of minutes while I just want to run down a couple of things about uh, the, the end of the Masters. I just saw, I mean just now saw, a tweet. From, I think it was Darren Rovell who has a – somebody sent out a picture, a guy named Brian. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama, and Matsuyama-san is sitting in the airport connecting to go to Tokyo, to go back home. Uh, he is on a 6.45 a.m. flight to Chicago. Then he's going to go to Tokyo from there. There's a photo of him, and next to him in his empty, you know, there's, you know, the airports, is the green jacket just folded over a chair. The most valuable piece of clothing in all of golf is the green jacket. And there it's sitting there in the middle of the airport. Would, would you take it? Would you just, uh, Matsuyama, congratulations, uh, Hideki-san, uh, and just go, what, psych, and just take off? Like, what would you do with it? You wouldn't get far, but would you at least try it on? Now, he and I would not be the same size, so it would look pretty goofy on me. I probably couldn't get my arms through the sleeves, but... Come on. Swear to God, you should see this. I'm, I can't show it to you right now. I just found it. If you have Darren Rovell, R-O-V-E-L-L, -L, uh, he's the one who retweeted this. It is insane. Um, there's a darn good chance that when uh, Matsuyama-san returns to the United States, whenever that is, probably in, in May, um, it not be going commercial. Just a thought. Uh, it wasn't the most exciting, Masters. It could have been had Xander Shoffley decided to hit a good shot on 16 instead of gas chunking it into the water, thereby ending my masters. I was on to a Family Guy rerun by the time that uh, Matsuyama put it out. One more cool thing, though. There is a, a little video about 10 seconds long. If you're a golf fan, you probably saw of the caddy putting the flag stick back in at 18 and then bowing toward the course to show respect. Uh, that just blew me away. You don't normally see that. Uh, usually... <laughs> Any opinions about any golf course are not involving bowing to show respect. Uh, middle fingers, cursing, hat throwing, club throwing, ball throwing, driving your cart into the canal, all of can be shown to express your disgust with a golf course, but not bowing. That was impressive, to say the least. But look, Matsuyama-san deserves it. Uh, I thought he was in deep trouble on the first hole. He bounced back. I thought deep trouble after 15. He steadied and ended up, you know, 73 is not glorious, but he won. That's all that matters, right? Whether you win by 1 or 10, whether you shoot a 65 or a 75, as long as you win, that is all that matters. And in the meantime, Bryson DeChambeau, having his 18th workout of the day while drinking 35 protein shakes, I uh, was trying to figure out how to play this course still. So I wish him well. Now... Let's move on to my guests, who I'm really happy to have on. It seems like usually they're asking me to come on their show, but now I've reversed the polls. And let's bring in from the Paul Castronova show, my friends Heather Nelson and Mike Anderson, who apparently needs a Red Bull to get through this. <laughs> I didn't realize I was that boring, Mike. So hang on. I can't hear a thing you're saying. Okay, neither can I. Can All you right. hear me? Hear me? I hear you. So we'll just leave Mike out there in the earth, Heather. We have plenty to catch up on. Uh, all right. Can you hear? Mike, go ahead and take another shot at it. Hmm. No. Right now, you sound like uh, an air traffic controller having a really bad day, and that's something you don't really want in your life. So you might need to come back in uh, and just see, because uh, I know occasionally things freeze up and all this other stuff, so... But you're a radio pro, right, Mike? <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> no, nope. no, nope, not at all. The best part, Heather, the best part is he can hear us rip him and he can't <laughs> respond. Can you beat he's, that? He's actually like two feet away from me over in our office there. <laughs> we're, we're, we've tried to separate. I should just maybe get a group thing going and we can yell loudly. Whatever works, uh, as long as we have him on the darn show. How are you? 
I'm good. How are you? I miss you. I'm so hanging much. in. I know. I know. It stinks that we don't. Well, we owe you guys, uh, not you, the heck with him, but I know uh, we want to see you out for dinner here soon. So now that things are settling in, we need to do that. I know. I owe you a birthday dinner from last year. And I believe we are just a couple of weeks away from this. We year. are. Yeah, we are. Alarmingly. So I think three weeks from today, as a matter of fact. Alarmingly. Yeah, you're right. So I owe you two dinners, two taco dinners now. Ooh, I know several places that qualify for that. So <laughs> one in particular that we, we both know the proprietor, yes. as he would call himself. By the way, that place is insane. Really? I haven't been. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, it's it's exceptional. I give him credit. Bless his heart. Uh, I love him no matter what he does, but that place. All right, let's try this again. Ladies and gentlemen, radio professional, career man who began – Radio 1965, Mike Anderson. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, it's, it's the first time I've used StreamYard for anything, and I guess I uh, my settings weren't set for it. So yeah, all you, you had to do was click allow. Don't make excuses. Yeah. No, it was I had to change my uh, microphone input, but uh, okay. Anyway, I'm here. Well, I know where you guys are sitting because I've been in that room often enough, and I know exactly where the desk you're at, Mike, and I know exactly where Heather is over by, unless you've moved the printer. So let's get into a show controversy, Heather, that I'm sure you're happy it's behind you now. I'm so glad it's over. See? I'm so glad it's over. All right. So who came up with the idea to do a TV-themed <laughs> bracket in the first place? That's Paul Castronet, though. That's all his fault. The whole every It's his name on the show. He gets mm -hmm. all the blame. That seems fair, although he blames you. Uh, he says you don't recognize anything that was before 1970 or something like that. Yeah, well, and this was Paul's idea, and he was very much in love with it from Jump Street. And then as this tournament progresses, he starts crapping on it more and more <laughs> to the point where I'm like, hey, this was your idea, Paul. To Good do for you. The, yeah. The tournament. <laughs> and now, like, you know, cause it, and most of the entries on here were his. Heather did add in some of uh, the listener submissions that got a lot of uh, comments and mentions. But I would say 60, 70% were Paul's picks, right, Heather? Oh, yeah. He came in with a list of uh, 29 songs that had okay. to be on here no matter what. He, we wanted to do, <laughs> but the original plan was to do 16 down to eight to four to Before, championship. Yeah. To, so we were only going to do two weeks of it. But he came in with 29 songs, and I was like, okay, so which 13 are we cutting? None of them were good enough to no. cut, so we had to do 32. And then just could not handle not having a single one of the songs that he wanted in there. I'm like, nobody well, else cares about this song, Paul. What song was it? Um, gosh, what was the one that he was super oh, obsessed with? Bonanza, Bonanza overtook a morning uh, one day early in the tournament. <laughs> Those are words that have not been uttered on radio in about 50 years. Uh, I, that's I, a good I, tune, though, I have to say. It is. No doubt about it. But there was a lot of good ones we had to leave off because, again, it was only 32. Bewitched so, wasn't on there, which made me very upset. Uh, the Mary Tyler Moore Show, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yep. Those, yep. That, that cut to the core, I want you to know. That was upsetting. Yeah. Well, Simpsons, well, one of your Simpsons. Yeah. It was covered by Fish and Green Day, among other bands that have covered the Simpsons. Mary Tyler Moore was covered by Joan Jett, among others. Um, have the Perry Mason theme. For heaven's sakes, yeah. uh, what's Mason. his name? Uh, Ozzy Osbourne wrote a song called Perry Mason. It oh, wasn't, you know. I uh, so I know it's it's tough. Um, the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. When I brought up the Paul, I thought he was going to have a heart attack. He goes, "Oh, yeah. that would win." And I go, probably not, given the audience is younger, but. Yeah, I now. think the, the thing that was going to win, I thought for sure it would be Cheers, because it's something that I think yeah. spans generations. I have no clue how, the, even though the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was a song, the one song that I added, I have no clue how that won. I think it was the Dark Horse effect. Once people what saw it doing well. And, you know, nobody, I, at least like Heather, I didn't expect it to do well either. I think people got behind it because, and maybe it was because Paul hated it too. Right. Maybe they wanted to spite Paul. That's a possibility. <laughs> no, no one's ever felt like that before. I didn't create five separate Twitter accounts just so I could vote multiple times. No. <laughs> that was the other thing too. But there were rumors. 
Yeah, Friday. Yeah, there yep. was a weird jump in votes for Fresh Prince in the first hour of the show, six o'clock hour, when we didn't typically get a ton of votes. Usually they trickle in throughout the day. But that was odd. Yeah, we don't know what happened, do we? I don't know why Will Smith would demand that kind of attention. Right. Now, we, I tried to do research into it to figure out where the votes were coming from. And I have, you know, several options, but I can't prove anything. Also, a couple of, one other suggestion, try to finish either the same day or before the actual NCAA tournament ends. Uh, well, we would have, <laughs> we would have if we had done 16, like the original plan was. We didn't come up with the idea until three weeks before. Well, if you do it again, what I suggest is throw out the champ. He's ineligible to repeat as champ, or it's ineligible to repeat as champ. And, you know, maybe that's some other very, suggestions. That's not very March Madness-like. No, it's not. That would be kind of unfair. You you won, but you can't play <laughs> next year. No, that, <laughs> so uh, what, I, I guess it would still be worth winning, right? I mean, the probably, you know, well, the defending champion just won and is kicked out. Right. So that You'd would want bring to come in new, second place. Constantly. But then, but yeah, but you never get the win. Like the guy, like Matsuyama yesterday at the Masters. Suppose he was told, "Okay, buddy, congrats, but you can never come back." I guarantee you, he takes the title and just doesn't come back. You got to have the title. Takes it's his just jacket a thought. And leaves. He takes his jacket, which apparently was draped over a chair at some airport. I guess. Well, let me see. If he He's goes in Atlanta, Augusta, said, right? Well, Augusta. Has a you know decent airport. So he goes Augusta, Chicago, Chicago, Tokyo. So he's in the Augusta airport at quarter to seven this morning. Look at this check. <laughs> Not in his luggage. He's just carrying it around. I've always well, wondered. You don't that. check that. No, you I don't. Either, yeah. Oof. Well, no. Dave, do the people that do win the Masters do they ever wear that outside of Masters weekend when they all get together for their photo op? Verboten. So it's not Let's like just the Stanley say, Cup where we're going to go no, out drinking no. it? No, you know that. You guys both know. The Stanley Cup is taken everywhere. Every player, every coach, I think the managers, the trainers, they all get a day with the cup, and they take it wherever they take it. And they drink out of it. Lord knows what else they've done, what kind of liquids have oh, been in that God. thing. Um, but, yeah, um, all the time. No, the, the green jacket, no way. Um, they get – I think, if I remember right, there's one that's permanently at the club, and then there's one that they get – that is theirs, but uh, no, he's not going to be walking around. Hey, let's go out to dinner, guys. Let me a second. Let me just uh, get a little something here to get. No, no, he'll he he'll get in big trouble for that. That's I mean, they won't guys. disqualify him, but he will get in big trouble. What do you feel about the guys that wear their Super Bowl rings out? Like not just to an event, like a big whatever right. uh, promotional event for the team or something, but are, are like walking around because some guys do that. Yeah, you know, the guy heads to Win Dixie to buy a couple steaks and some <laughs> soda, and he's got to you know, and the, as you know. The Super Bowl rings now take up. I mean, normal people can wear them on two fingers. Mm -hmm. And these guys, yeah, they have diamonds. They're worth a lot of money. Um, if I had a ring like that, it would depend on how secure I was in my life and in my career. If I was insecure, I'd wear it. If I was famous and I didn't need that to, be, to remind people that I was a Super Bowl champion, I can think of one guy in particular that Heather's a big fan of who doesn't have to wear those things. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll give you an example. There was a, uh, you mentioned golf. We talked championship. Tiger Woods. Somebody visited Tiger in his rehab, his, his home, and he go into a room and he's got all of his major championship trophies, all fifteen of them. And he goes, "Well, where do you keep the other sixty-seven? He goes, "Well, they're around. They're here. Somebody's got a couple here." He only kept the ones that really mattered. Not that the others didn't you know, didn't want to win the other tournaments, but he kept what really counts. So yeah. I think the guys who have the security in their careers do not have to do that. Yeah, it's always a curious phenomenon to me. I mean, like, I remember, I forget there was a UFC fighter. Tim Sylvia would walk around with the belt, heavyweight championship belt, out. Like, he would wear it to a bar. <laughs> and, you know, those belts aren't, like, uh, the belt buckle you get for uh, uh, bull riding. Those things probably weigh 20 pounds. But, yeah, he was no, a maniac. Or the, uh, right. You don't get that for bowling a 300. You get a belt buckle and a ring. Um, you get that, but no, I, Muhammad Ali never was photographed wearing his, you know, championship belt when he was walking around, you know, wherever he might be. He didn't but need I, it. I always Everybody that knew who he was. Exactly. Yeah. I always wondered that with the master's jacket though, because it is, it is, you know, it's not that ostentatious. It's just green. 
the right. little logo or whatever on there. So I'm like, do they wear that to other golf outings or would that oh, be really, no. really weird? Not weird, bad. Weird golf too. So uptight. Uh, yes, we are. There is isn't any doubt about that. Worse than baseball when it comes to weird traditions and uh, like with you know baseball with the bat flip and other things you just don't do. Like, unspoken. but that's not it. Well, that's relatively new, and and it's younger players, and it, so it, it pisses off the old people like everything else that young people do that pisses off old people. Um, you know, music and all this other stuff. Well, see, I'm I'm way older than you guys, but the hilarious thing now is listening to people at my age complain about music today i'm going are you are you kidding where were you where were your you know when you're 15 or 20 and you're listening to zeppelin and the stones and the who and pink floyd and all this and your parents are like turn that down what are you now you've just <laughs> you're, it's the same thing well, I, yeah i think i saw you comment on facebook Dave, after the Super Bowl, you're like, I can't believe you're bragging that you don't know who the weekend is. Like that, okay, I understand if you don't, but like to act like I don't even know who he is. I'm and I'm happy I don't. Like I'm seems so like cool, weird. I don't care. That's right. it. That's what I don't need to know. You know what? <laughs> I, I feel like every time, same thing with the Grammys. So let's say there's nine performers at the Grammys, and maybe one or two of them I'm familiar with, and the others I don't know. I have an option. I can tune in to learn about them. Or I can just say, no, to hell with it, I don't care. But I don't feel it's necessary to go on Facebook and go, well, this sucks because I don't know who these people are. Well, they, you know, why share your ignorance with the world? Yeah, that's on you for not keeping up. You have a choice. You can keep up with the latest TV shows, the latest movies, the streaming, whatever, who wins them at. That's your call. But uh, taking pride in ignorance, it's very American, number one. I don't know. There's a few things more American than that. But I don't. I don't take pride in that. I just don't. I don't walk around, you know, my chest puffs because I don't know. And then I come to find out I do know some songs by the weekend. I just didn't know it was him. Yeah. When yeah. when he started playing uh, the Super Bowl, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. He did that song. I forgot how many hits he does, actually. Yes. It's a lot. I'll, I'll give you an example this morning at school with the new show that I help with. The kids picked the video today. It was a Jonas Brothers song. And I go, sucker. I've, I've never heard that song. Then they played it, and I heard the chorus. I go, oh, yeah. I just didn't know it was the Jonas Brothers. Actually, kind of a nice song. I liked it. But I remember how the chorus goes. What, I'm a right. sucker for you. Oh, yeah. That one. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I had heard I had heard. You, Listen, if you know the history of American idiots, you really don't want me to sing anybody's songs, Mike. You weren't oh, around nice. for that. Um, <laughs> you know, that it was a successful bit, but you notice it hasn't been revived for a reason. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not familiar with that bit. So you was like you doing karaoke, and listeners would have to guess the song. No, the, the way we did it was this is going back to the Paul and Young Ron days. So Heather wasn't involved in the show at the time either. We actually had Jenners yeah. and Tommy. This was I don't even remember what years this were. Had to be in the late '90s, when the, or early 2000s. Um, we'd have topics, and then I forgot if the songs were assigned to us or they were picked. So you might get something like. Um, God, I can't remember the topic. Topic A, and you'd get a song by The Who. Like, I remember doing one on the death of Jerry Falwell to The Who's Won't Get Fooled Again. Um, I remember doing one on Jenner's with Billy Joel's Only the Good Die Young. Um, did one on Young Ron with The Beatles. Uh, uh, hey, Jude. Let It Be. I won that week, actually. Uh, so... It, it would be like that. And then you would sing your song and then the fans would vote on it. Oh, okay. um, so it was like a competition. Style. It was a competition. Understanding that, I mean, Paul has a pretty good voice, but the rest of us couldn't sing for, for Squatola. So that was kind of the comedy in it. And you tried to write the funniest thing you could do because you always wanted, like today, you want your line to make the room laugh. I wanted my line to make the room laugh. It's, that's never changed. You're always trying to top each other. So... Yeah, that was a. I loved that bit. Now I was the worst singer, but I got to the point where, if that was going to be my thing, that I was going to embrace how bad I was. Yeah, that's the okay. thing. You got to go one way or the other, either really bad or really good. Like yeah, William Hung. Yeah, I, it's not like I ran. <clears throat> yes, it's not like I ran out and got singing lessons. At this point, I'm like, well, this is it. If I can write something funny. Then, I, then we'll be okay. And I wouldn't win very often, but I would win from time to time. But that felt good. 
Who needed a green jacket if I won American Idiots that week? <laughs> Ask Paul. Somewhere he may have, might have a CD, you know, one of those oh, old wow. best ofs. Um, oh, I know yeah. that one sold out. Or listeners, you know, anybody who's, who's a listener who catches the show either now or later when they watch it on YouTube or catch it on the page later, they'll remember American Idiots. The longtime listeners will. For sure. Uh, Heather, the Tom, a couple of things. You have a couple of phenomena and, and things you really are passionate about. One, of course, is, is the Patriots. With Brady yes. gone, how was the Super Bowl for you? I never got a chance to ask you this. Oh, it was great. He was in it still. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like any other Super Bowl, except for I wasn't there in person. Okay. So it felt, it felt good. I was cheering for him, very happy for him when he won. And uh, yeah, it was great. Loved it. Mike, I've got to believe as a Baltimorean and a Ravens fan, you know Likey. Uh, you no, know, I found that I became much more of a fan. What I realized was I didn't hate Tom. I hated the Patriots in New England and the fans. But Tom himself, he was just a part of that machine at the time, and so I lumped him in all together. But once he was removed from that, and, and the fact that he angered a lot of New England fans by being successful – uh, with the Buccaneers, combined with the fact that the Patriots were terrible last year. And yes, they were. Crap yes, the they bed were. And, but he has no players to crap with. You know what I mean? They just don't have enough. God bless Tony Michelle, who went to school a mile from here and is an all-around solid citizen, by the way. But, yeah, they don't really have much of an offense. No, no. no. Yeah, you can't blame Cam solely, but uh, it was just good to see uh, just a general failure up there in New England. <laughs> I mean, you've done games up there, Dave, right? You've been. At, I've uh, been there as for 11. college games, and so and so a UMass game does not exactly have the same atmosphere as a Patriots game in Foxborough, shall we say? <laughs> but That's yeah, those sure. fans, they're nasty. They are real nasty. <laughs> well, they came. Listen, the term "mass hole" was not invented to discuss the potholes on the, during the big dig. Um, yeah, it's so. not an inaccurate term at all. So, and yeah, the funny no, no, thing I, is, they embrace it. Yeah. That's what I don't get. Like I would be like the people who do dumb things in this state, which I know you all talk about frequently. You know, news from Tampa and all the other dopey things that go on here. Yet some people take pride in stupid. Well, look at the new Sam Adams commercials. Now they're spokesperson. They're just leaning into the whole Boston <laughs> angle. And uh, yeah, what's it? Your uh, cousin from Boston, whatever his yes. name is. From like, he's he's even, even doing radio commercials now. Oh, God. He's all over it. the place. Yeah, they're, he's, they're full speed ahead with that guy. So, they yeah, they embrace uh, being uh, whatever that is, whatever that uh, guy from Boston is. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess he, he, at first I really hated him, but he's starting to uh, grow on me now. I'm starting well, to, to like it. As long as you see the humor, you're okay. Uh, Heather, when I put this out on Twitter, <clears throat> responded as only Heather can respond with a picture of Britney Spears. <laughs> we have not heard much about her lately. She is your favorite. Is everything okay in Britney world? Oh, Britney world is weird because, you know, she's still taking her dad to court constantly to try and get out from the conservatorship that she's been under since 2008, which is really weird because she managed to, you know, work and have the most successful Las Vegas residency of all time and make millions of dollars for everyone. Um, but she was too mentally incompetent to choose what to eat for breakfast, but she could still do that. So uh, she's still taking him to court, but nobody knows what's really going on because all of her social media is so weird. Half the time, you don't think she actually wrote the caption and she constantly posts the same exact pictures. It's like, really? take a, like she posts the same pictures in the same floral top by the same tree with the same look on her face. But, you know, every two weeks, she'll post three more of those photos. And we're like, this is the same exact photo that you've posted a million times. And she says, no, no, it's different. It's weird. Wow. I did not realize that. So no weird. matter the topic, it could be 9-11, we'll never forget. And we'll put the same picture up. Or, wow, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And it's the same picture. It doesn't matter the caption. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's just, it's weird. Go through her, go through her Instagram right around, I want to say 2018, late 2018, early 2019, when her dad got sick and she went away for a mental health break or whatever, when she didn't do mm -hmm. her second 
uh, Las Vegas residency. Her voice changes, her whole uh, demeanor on social media changes, her captions get really weird. It, the like whole a, thing. Yeah, like something, like you look at, even in pictures, I was just looking through her, uh, her Instagram and like there's a picture from her probably around 2000. Like just looking at her eyes and the way she's looking, like something changed behind her eyes. Like, oh, this picture, this exact picture. Okay. She, she nice posted, photo. She has posted a version of this photo. If you go back, you will find at least 70 versions of it. It's insane. And I'm so, I'm obsessed. I listen to Britney Spears' conspiracy podcast now. Which leads me, and I didn't want to discuss the, the, the conspiracy we're with you guys. And this is a perfect jumping off point because I'm sure you either hear it from people when you're doing research for the show to look for topics, you bump into all sorts of bizarre conspiracy theories. Some are worth making fun of. Others are like, ooh, seriously? Where do you, Mike, where do you land on that? Where do you decide that a conspiracy theory is worth putting on the show because you might have a good laugh over it? Um, or, or whether you go, oh, no, I can't touch that. Yeah, I, I backed off of uh, UFO uh, ufology or whatever, and different, and which the news this year so far has been um, pretty substantial. Especially, I think in the next was it June they're going to uh, reveal what file reveal what files they uh, have on it. Trump put in some order before he left that uh, they'd have to dis like once a year disclose. Uh, you're the legal expert here, Heather. Um, <laughs> but Heather, I missed your graduation from law school. I, I'm sorry I couldn't be there that day. Yeah, I know. I, I studied constitutional law, so it, if it wasn't in the Constitution, I don't know. But yeah, the, it was something. It was a hundred. He had a. There was a hundred day deadline to right, uh, that they had freedom to public information. Blah blah blah. But there's been a lot of different. Uh, there's been new videos from the Navy of these pyramid shaped. Uh, I don't know if you saw that story. Like the, the destroyer was. Uh, surrounded by a number of, they called them drones, but they're shaped like pyramids. And there's video. Watch the video. It's like night vision video. I think I did see that because it was the colors are fascinating. It was like a cat. The colors fascinated me and drew me <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, all this great footage, like you know, that's really pretty significant coming from legitimate sources like the Navy and other uh, branches of the military that are releasing their videos of stuff they say they don't know, and that's breaking the sound barrier without actually without a sonic boom, like going faster than sound and not creating sonic booms and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I don't bring that up anymore because uh, Paul hates it. But uh, because that's my favorite conspiracy is uh, that stuff. But, you know, obviously if it's flat earth or stuff or hollow earth that came up when we were talking about God's hollow own. earth. Yeah, that's a, that's one. It, I've never really, you know, I, there has to be some sort of kernel of truth there for me to go down the rabbit hole. And that one, I'm just like, yeah, I put it in the same. Then why do we talk to flat earthers? Well, because that's so ridiculous that. Uh, okay. Yeah, and we even we backed off of that. We talked to a few, you know, when it really started to to gain uh, steam a couple of years ago. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Do we address any other conspiracies? I mean, the flat Earth is the fun one that's kind of safe. It's not uh, like Paul brought up nine eleven the other day, and we're like, you know. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. We're like, yeah, that's not Ooh. even open that box. No. Yeah, that's uh, no. Uh... <laughs> is there a conspiracy theory that you might buy? Is there something that's got enough of a thread or a kernel, as you mentioned, Mike, that you go, okay, now I could see that happening. Uh, JFK, I think, is probably uh, the biggest one, right? Uh, that's so everybody's favorite. I was going to yeah. say Jeffrey Epstein. Is that a conspiracy oh, yeah, theory, yeah, or is that yeah, just yeah. something we've all acknowledged is really true? Because, yeah. Oh, that he had a little help in, in leaving this earth? Yeah. Or Got that you. he's still alive and that was uh, faked. That's the the other uh, scenario seems more plausible, that he was you know killed by somebody. Say hi else. to Heather. <laughs> say hi. We have cats now. Oh, That's so one cute. of them. She's the one who doesn't like to get picked up. The other one who does, her, her brother is over there. Actually, not. I'm surprised you can't hear him going through a bag right now. <laughs> so they, my son rescued them from under a car. So uh, yeah, they are cute, actually. We've turned to, you know, we have a dog, as you know. But anyway, not to, not to distract, but she was almost about to walk on top of the computer. Uh, so I figured I'd get that out of the way. That's what cats do. Uh, JFK is one, Mike. Mike, JFK is still big. There are still people at Dealey Plaza. Uh, one or two, not many now, who have their you know little setups 
with books and photo, you know, all this stuff they've been pitching for God knows how many years. Right there, because there's an X. I don't know if you all have ever been there. There's literally an X painted into the pavement, the road where it happened. Right. Yeah, so yeah, you can't did. miss it. And then you could actually not stand there because there's traffic. It's a busy place. But um, you can kind of look and you go, hmm. But I'm a I'm I'm really cynical. I know, surprise, about conspiracy. The only one that I give the slightest bit of credibility to is the sports one, is the famous, was there a frozen envelope when the Knicks won the first draft lottery and got to pick Patrick Ewing? Back when they had this big-ass bowl and he had these envelopes that were yay big with the team logo in it, and supposedly they left, they put one in the freezer so the commissioner would feel around, grab the frozen one, and so the Knicks, the New York team, would get the star player coming out of college. Damn that had a shred of credibility to me, even though the commissioner says you're out of your flipping mind and everybody else denies it. The rest of them, uh, I admit, I, in fact, I'm getting worse because it seems like that met, that's growing. And, and, and I just, that's a, to me as a fungus, I just like, nah, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to stay away from that. I've never heard of that one. I'll have to research that. Oh, it's a pretty well-known one. I mean, now, obviously, good Lord, that was like 1985. So it's not one that is, you know, got a lot of legs to it anymore. But, yeah, that was a big one. Um, Do you ever wonder about games being fixed? Well, the NBA did have a problem with that. Um, no, I don't. I mean, I have a friend from high school who is a uh, college basketball ref who I think is an incredibly honest man. He always has been. I used to work at Highlight. And I'm actually going to go back there in May for a month to announce. And we would hear about the fix theory all the time. And the problem is, in the 70s, they did catch some guys. Nowadays, there's not enough money to make it worth it. But I, you know, people have all these theories. And why did he drop the ball when he caught the one that was so difficult? Well, I would always think that the most logical way to fix would to, you know, fix a football game. And really, all you need to do is get the one like ref and have them call holding. On a seminal play. important plays. Yeah, and there's there was a one or two college basketball fixing scandals. Uh, the one that's probably the most famous one that featured Henry Hill, the guy from Goodfellas. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, with Boston College, where they did and there's a that's that's a true story and it's actually kind of interesting uh, how they got a couple of guys to shave points and all you do there is let's say that you know, Boston College is favored by ten. Well, you only win by five. You still win. What's that line? Mm -hmm. If you win, you win. If you lose, you still win. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah. You had that one, and they finally got uh, – did they get caught? I think the players were – you know, they were getting pretty good money for the time. And then it was a night that they screwed everybody over. The players didn't do what they were supposed to do. Or one guy who wasn't in on it ruined it for the guys who were in on it because he had a good game, and that kind of put a halt to it. Luckily, nobody got hurt or anything. But, yeah, uh, there was a little bit – some lives were literally – careers were literally ruined because these guys got exposed out of it so that 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 can happen um baseball you had the cheating but not necessarily fixing but no that's yeah. a good one mike i can't the nba refs thing and you know so immediately it's but everybody else and whatever whenever somebody would ask me about high lie or the horses i would always say the same thing and i still say it i have never yet heard anybody walking up to a window to cash a winning ticket going <laughs> that was fixed it's only the people who are throwing their tickets on the ground and throwing them in the garbage or ripping them up and throwing them like confetti that are complaining that something was fixed. Winners don't complain. Yeah, I mean, maybe boxing, too. I'm not super uh, uh, into boxing, so I don't know a whole lot about it. But I, I do remember seeing a few videos of some knockouts that were very questionable. You know, people w went down on punches that really – didn't look like they should put you down. I can't really think of any. I think in the old days, yes. I think that when the mob was involved in it, yes, that probably happened. Guy, well, look at Raging Bull. Jake LaMotta took money to take a dive. That's a true story. Right, right. Yeah. You know, that wasn't made up. Um, but that was, you know, you talk about different eras and all that. I think today it's, it, it has to be worth it for somebody to do it, right? Uh, so yeah. if it's not worth it, if you're not attracting you enough gambling money or, you know, then no, I don't think you're going to get away with it. Not at all. Yeah. But Not no, at yeah, all. What, uh, what did you hit on today? What was uh... – Oh, on the show today? Well, Talk anything. I mean, I, I did not Talk get a chance to listen to the oh, yes. I mean, I'm Paul. sure Paul did not do a deep dive on the Masters. No, no. we didn't. He talked about falling asleep during the no. Masters. Oh, and I wanted to ask you, have you ever been to Augusta? 
No. Augusta, yes. The Masters, no. You can't even see it from the road. Wow. Uh, it's well, that just, private. I've driven by it, and my friend who lives there goes, it's through there. And you can't even pull a, well, let me pull off and stick my can't. No, 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 no. That's not so happening either. It's not open to public play at all? Ever? No, negative. You have to be a member uh, or the friend of a member um, oh. to be invited. And some of the years closed. They closed the place down for a while to maintain the, its, its natural look. Yeah, oh, they're powerful. Just... Here's, here's, here, we've all heard of FU money. All right. Mm -hmm. We all know what that means. This is, this is FU right here. The Masters only sells their gear at the tournament. Wow. So you you realize, think of that. How much money would they make if they had a Masters clothing website, officially licensed Masters gear with the logo? Every golfer I know would buy that stuff in bulk, and they yeah. don't do it. It wow. blows me away, the amount of money, because they don't care. They have They're everything uptight. already. Well, it's not uptight. Because you know what, Heather, you're you're ahead of us all in technology. They have an app mm -hmm. that's the best I've ever seen for sports. It's that's absolutely nice. incredible. And you know, next year, just for giggles, it, I think it's free to download. Spend like a half hour looking at it, and you'd be shocked at the detail that you get out of the masters. These old guys that have all the money in the world, what they do with it. So they're not completely uptight. They're incredibly uptight. But it's yeah, hard to, hard to get in as a uh, spectator. Excuse me, <clears throat> that's patron. Oh, oh God! <laughs> See, so is it no. only uptight? Like, oh, uptight! You cannot uptight. say. All right, if you hit a ball wide, you hit it in the rough, right? You've hit it into the first cut, or the second cut, and the patrons here. Oh yeah, and you never, ever. Mention prize money. It ain't bad either, by the way. Matsuyama-san did pretty well for himself yesterday. But you never hear, wow, he just won a million and a half dollars. Never. Not allowed. So they tell the crews, the broadcast crews, like, hey, I'm, I'm guessing they send a whole memo of things that you cannot do during the broadcast. At this point, the guys who have been there have been there so long, they don't even need to say it. And you know how, I mean, when you said... Spectators, I went, no, 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 not, not spectators, <laughs> not a gallery. No, Mike, don't say that. Don't let them um, hear that. No, no, you can't do that. The other thing, say, oh, I'll give you an example. Google Gary McCord someday if you want to kill a minute. He was uh, their irreverent, funny guy on CBS Golf. One day he made a crack, I want to say it was in 1986, that these greens look like they've been bikini waxed. Oh, oh boy. Uh, old Gary hadn't been back since. He worked every other tournament for CBS except the Masters. Not invited back. The Masters invites you. CBS doesn't go, hey, Heather, we're assigning you to uh, holes uh, 12 and 13. No, Heather, the Masters has approved you uh, being on our crew this year. You know, welcome so, yeah. aboard. Let's say a patron shouted during somebody's backswing. How quickly are they being uh, pummeled? Shot? Carried. <laughs> Banned for life. Um, I don't know about that. I just don't think they do it. The other thing, by the way, you might as well leave your cell phone in North Carolina. Oh, no cell phones either. Zero. And I don't actually, that doesn't sound bad. In other words, you don't have a bunch of people walking around, you know, click, click yeah. or videotaping. We've all been to concerts back in the old days where the guy in front of you is like this. Yeah. And I'm thinking, how good is that video quality when I can barely tell that's Dave Grohl or whomever it is? And you're not only doing this, but you're blocking my view. Uh, a few snapshots, yeah, I've got pictures of concerts, um, but I don't stand there like this yeah, trying to capture it. You know, no, they, no cell phones, none of that stuff. No, no, no. It's um, And, of course, and how hard is it to get in? Uh, there's a ticket lottery. Uh, otherwise, I assume that there are some corporate ways to get in. Um, it is considered the most valuable ticket in sports or the most difficult to get. Wow. Is there any way I think to there like, are buy packages you can buy, market? travel packages? Yes. Um, says the person who has spent lots of money doing things that she wanted to do, like Super Bowls and concerts. Um, I yes, that. I believe there are there are packages you can buy that would include a few things and does include a, what they call, by the way, it's not a ticket, it's a badge. 
even though you don't actually wear it. It's a badge. Mm. Cheap concessions, though. You can get, you could eat there all day for like 20 bucks. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know if you posted yeah. it, Dave, or somebody. I think I did. It. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 and they're crazy low. Yeah, they did one of those things like, okay, you get $15 to spend at the Masters. How are you spending it? And with $15, you walk out of there full. Yeah, those prices are cheap for 1980. And again, <laughs> why? They don't care. It's my, it's our tournament. That's why it was so funny when when Major League Baseball moved the thing out of Atlanta, the, the All Star Game. You probably, I'm sure you talked about it at least. And people were going, "Well, they they got to move the Masters out of Georgia." It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. It's a private club. Number one, they could do whatever they want. Number two. You play it at the same course every year, so it's not the Masters if you decide you're going to move it to New Mexico. And they're not doing that for you, for anybody. You know, they wouldn't. So it that was the dumbest thing I ever heard, ever, almost, almost ever. Uh, you've heard a lot of dumb things, Dave. <laughs> I have. I have. So, so have you guys. Um, you know, I, it's sometimes the looks that you give each other in a room that the audience never sees are 20 times funnier than anything that ever gets said. <laughs> yep. That is true. You know, you can look around the room and go, oh, God, no. Oh, God. <laughs> That's why we don't want to put cameras in the studios. Oh, I don't blame you. I wouldn't want that either. Unless you, even unless you had some major celebrity guest come in. I know there was some talk about doing that. And I think actually really early on, before streaming ever became what it is, there were one or two people who tried to do that. I'm talking at least... 10 years ago now. And no, nah, the, 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 boys, the boys were definitely against it. Who wanted to see young Ron sit on his couch for 10 minutes reading the paper <laughs> during a break? No, that was a, that was a delight yeah. and a privilege to witness. Well, you were part of all that. That's right. Because you came in behind the scenes initially. You were the one we always went to when we couldn't figure something out with our computers or anything like that. And you had the answer in like a half of a second. I Googled it. That is the big secret. Whatever problem anybody walked up to me and said, this isn't working, I just typed exactly what they were saying into Google. Then there was a solution. Well, none of us were that savvy. <laughs> so how many years have you actually been? I can't even remember. When did you start going on the air regularly? On the air was um, May of uh, 2018. Yeah, May 2018. Really? I thought it was earlier than that. Nope. Nope. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so it'll be three years, uh, three years the weekend after Mother's Day. I know you used to come in uh, periodically, and the best part about you coming in is you were the one person who would absolutely throw everything back in Paul's face, whatever he said that he thought he could get away with. You had zero tolerance for that. <laughs> and it was awesome. <laughs> I'm glad it's it's only because everybody else thought it was awesome that I got to stay around. Well, I think it is because in all seriousness, it's one of the things I remember talking to him. I said, you know, about you and thinking as you know, she she doesn't put up with your crap. And the audience <laughs> likes that. Yeah. You know, much as the audience loves Paul, it doesn't hurt every once in a while to see him get chopped down by somebody on the show. And you were a perfect foil for him. He's this huge Dolphin fan. You're the Brady-loving Patriot person, mm -hmm. all these others. And that's, and for the people who don't know, and I say this admiringly, Heather, you do a great job with this because that's not an easy thing to do and be good at it. You can do it oh. and be a pain in the ass and be annoying, but you manage to do it in a, I want to say charming manner, but you get your point across with him. And that's hard to do. I've known him forever and work with him for a long time. So I know the ins and outs. And you really, you know, I'm, I'm really happy you are where you are because you deserve it, number one. I'm, I'm glad. I know you were a little reluctant. Yes. To, yeah, to come out, sure. you know, you are. Yeah, you are kind of reluctant about the spotlight and all this other stuff. But, you know, you're damn good at what you do. And, you know, I just, you know, want to tell the public about that. I, you know, that I'm a, I'm a big Feather fan, so. That's why Mike, you're okay. <laughs> um, you know, now there's the show bulldog. Whatever show. Needs <laughs> yes. Now, Mike, you came in. Uh, how do you how do you adjust for somebody who's coming in from a different market? May not know that, don't know the personalities. You've interviewed these people. You may have talked with them, or maybe had lunch with them. But how do you ingratiate yourself and get your personality into the show when you're brand new? Oh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I just uh, 
put my head down and plowed forward and tried not to uh, completely have a mental breakdown. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's actually wise words. No, you yeah. know, just like you would with any kind of relationship with people, you just start to get to know each other and, you know, just grow and, you know, over time things get easier and people get to know you it's like any radio show that's new like i remember my favorite show back in the day was ron and fez but when i've heard, I never heard of but yeah i've heard of them never never listened but heard of them yeah yeah they used to be in tampa actually uh now they're on uh, sirius xm but well now it's just ron bennington and his daughter fez is in uh, pinellas park florida but i hated them at first you know any new anything new you tend to immediately hate so you just got to wait out that initial uh period and it'll let people warm up to you and not sure they ever have but uh but yeah no it's tough I'm not gonna say well, i hate to tell you mike but i do hear scary. from listeners from time to time <laughs> and your theory may be right yeah um, i don't need to hear this dave i don't need to hear this right no. now that's right just sprinkle some old bay on it you'll be fine the oh, old bay the other thing is the bizarre and I use massive air quotes, controversies that erupt. And I think of Old Bay seasoning, Mike, and the thing that came in out of that. Now, that's for those who don't know, it's a Maryland area seasoning that's primarily used on crab and seafood. And I know exactly what Mike's about to do right here. Well, that's the liquid version. See, yeah, I am the, used to the, the yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm used to the seasoning, and I'm a fan. I'm, I'm not from Maryland, but I'm from Virginia. So certainly I've had my share of, of crabs and, and, and with Old Bay on them. And you guys got into it, and it was hysterical. Some of the silly stuff is funnier than the stuff you plan. Yeah, sometimes that's the best stuff. But, yeah, I can't believe Paul won't come around on Old Bay because I know he loves seafood. He does. And what other major seafood seasoning is there? I mean, there's some, like, Old Bay knockoffs, like J.O. Spice, and there's a few other ones that you'll find in the Mid-Atlantic area. But what else is there for seafood? Um, I'm probably forgetting something egregious right now. Well, something out of New Orleans, maybe, but, you know, yeah, but Asian, like yeah, yeah, stuff. But yeah. I'm with you. But I'm like, yeah, Paul's got to like it, because what else do you put on your shrimp? You know, um, I know you Cocktail can put sauce. garlic and whatever on there, but, but oh. yeah, I thought he would come around and enjoy it. But And I don't, you know. I'm not like drinking this uh, like water or anything or, or using the seasoning that much, but um, that much just, just <laughs> enough to have a bottle of it in your office. Yeah, yeah well, they put out this was a uh, limited edition thing, the hot sauce uh, over the Christmas break. They put out a bunch of uh, bottles, and I grabbed like ten at Publix while I could. Although I will say but the hot sauce all the time. No, it's one of those things that when you like bottles. taste it, <laughs> when you taste it by itself, it's it's underwhelming, but when it goes on food, it, it comes alive type deal. But I think really they made this for Bloody Marys. Ooh. Was, yeah, I'm not a big Bloody Ooh. Mary fan either. You know what? When people, and this always amazed me about travel, because I've traveled every hour of the day, it seems like, but I would take, and or will take, 6 or 7 a.m. flights. A, people are drinking at 6 or 7 a.m., either inside the plane or even if there's an airport club that's open that I'm walking into, somebody's pounding something down at that hour. And then the smell, smell of tomato juice, whenever they would make a bloody on the plane and they would crack open that tomato juice, oh. I'm about ready to open the exit door and jump. I hate that smell. And so I don't drink Bloody Marys. To me, I'll take the vodka and the olives and I will go over in the corner and you can have celery and all this other stuff. Yeah, that's the other thing too now. Like these Bloody Mary drinks are, you'll see it on Instagram all the time. People will be out for brunch and it'll be a, the Bloody Mary. It'll have like two buffalo wings, <laughs> shrimp. I mean, it'll be like an entire meal on top of the glass. Like, come on, enough's yeah. enough. Enough to feed five people. It's ridiculous. It's, yeah, they're, it's, they're getting out of control. No, it, it's, it's funny you mentioned Bloody Marys because I, I just, you know, I, I've talked to you guys about my airplane quirks. Uh, and that's one of them, the smell of uh, tomato juice or V8 or whatever in a Bloody Mary. And also the other thing, I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys on the show or not. I was in Vegas in March, and I'm going to go back again because I love it. And if I was a single man, that's where I would live. But I don't want to live alone. <laughs> I love my wife. I'm going to stick with her. So she, by the way, she believes that people really don't live in Las Vegas. She sees it as some sort of bubble community that lets in people in and out to be tourists and you don't actually live there. You can play golf, you can gamble, go to shows, eat, whatever, but you sightsee, but you apparently don't live there. That's her theory. But six, I get up early, I can't help it. 
I know. Dr. Rick says no one cares. Um, <laughs> have you had him on, by the way? The guy in the commercial? Dr. Rick, the guy who does the commercials? Oh, my God. He's probably not the guy you should have on, but whoever the hell dreamed that character up? Uh, those commercials get me every time. Oh, my God. That they person... Be the, best, uh, the best, like, commercial ad campaign going on right now can you think of anything funnier or better the scoop there it is one gets me is that the same i do company? enjoy that i, I enjoy love that. that one i never mm -hmm. fast forward through that ever what's the product for it i can't even know it was it it's an insurance no. it's either yeah, progressive <laughs> or geico it's one of the two because they have the best commercials mm -hmm. anyway um so it's six something in the morning and i'm looking for a cup of coffee in the casino i was staying at there are still at like 50% capacity out there. So things have changed. You just can't go on. So I had to go to the bar to find coffee at six in the morning. And in order to do that, you got to play some video poker. Well, that's fine. On the other side of the bar was a loud argument between the bartenders and an overserved person at 6 a.m. Oh, no. They finally cut him off. Yeah. And he's mad about it. And then the next day, I go, and as I am walking away from the elevators, coming at me with an empty bottle of Corona at 6.15 in the morning on a Saturday is somebody staying in the hotel. Now, why you have the empty bottle of Corona going into the elevator, I don't really want to know the answer to that. But what are you doing? Yeah, I've Vegas never understood is so weird. People can day drink. Day drink? Really... They're morning drinking. <laughs> not even the sure sun's though? not out yet. Well, Because in Vegas... There are no windows. If you're in a casino, there are no windows. There are no clocks. You have no clue what time of day, whether it's day or night. You right. can just start and, and think that it's still 6 p.m. instead of a.m. Uh, you're right. And if you sit long enough, if you sit at a, at a machine, for example, there's always somebody offering you, and the drink is free. Mm -hmm. You just, you know, you tip um, if you want. And but but they want you to get ripped, so you do dumb things. And, and make it like you play blackjack and you start hitting on 20 is because you're blasted. That's money in their pocket. I, it, I mean, I love that place. I really, really love Vegas, but there are some things out there that I, that I, you know, I mean, I, you're right about the, 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 the daylight. I mean, there's a couple of casinos that might have open in the very front and you can kind of get some daylight in there, but Luckily, we don't have to worry about clocks anymore or watches because all you have to do is check our phones. But yeah, yeah. It, you still they still don't have them. Um, I think I don't even know. Well, you know, the only ones that have anything to do with time are the sports books, which will list the time of a game. Yeah, which they have to do. Uh, but that's it. So you know, oh, that game has started at one o'clock is now in the first inning, so it must be about one fifteen, one thirty. You know, that so kind is that what you do while you're out there, Dave? I go, I, I go to March Madness. The first weekend of March Madness, when you could, when you were there for the first four days, you could literally, I don't, you could literally bet on every game if you wanted to. So that's a, that's four days of best, of eight games, like 32 games. So you like and it's become a big tradition. Yeah, I go with a group of guys, and it's this year was a little bit different because it's been a little bit more subdued. I think next year is going to be people standing on top of each other. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I went out Saturday night to walk around just a concentrated area of the strip, right about in the middle. And it was not a six foot distance, but more like about that much distance between people. Luckily, they were all wearing masks. Let me get my camera in there. So <laughs> it's it's coming back. And I'm happy about that. There's some shows are coming back. You mentioned Vegas residencies. The Caesars part is still closed, but I guess they're going to start doing that again soon. There's a few shows. Penn and Teller are coming back. Um, so I'll yeah, they're starting to piece it back together. And they got buried by this thing. I mean, just until Hell's Bells at the beginning of the year, there were some casinos that were closing in the middle of the week and only yeah. opening on weekends. Yeah. You're talking about 25, 30-story hotels, thousands and thousands of square foot of casinos and restaurants and all that. Just nothing. Dark. God, that's a shame. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. It was. Yeah, I mean, about, if you live out there, if people do actually live there, where do you go to find another gig if nobody's coming in? Like that seems to be their cash cow as far as. Oh God, yeah. There's no industry in Vegas except us. We're their industry. You know, right. I mean what that. Uh, I guess if you could work at the airport or, or you know, but we are the industry. And if we're not there, and conventions, they're going to have a convention in June. It'll be their first one since the pandemic. So that's that's very big news for them. And then hopefully it goes well, and people, you know start showing up there healthy and, and don't get sick. But that yeah. of all the places in the United States that are so tourism dependent, including our area, 
whew, man, just horrible. Yeah. But it's still a little weird, like half capacity. So you see, you go to a restaurant and you go, half hour wait? What do you mean? Half the tables are, oh, that's right. Yeah, we can't, not, yeah. we can't to eat there. personally. Yeah. What now? I said, yeah. I still have not gone out to a restaurant to eat. Yet. Oh, I have. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that I would drive don't. me crazy. Well, yeah, but it would also drive me crazy. My, the reason I don't is because I don't want to go a, you know, where it's like you said, half the tables are closed off and there's weird distancing. And then you're wondering that they put a finger in the food. Is that per? Cause you're not moving when you're in the restaurant either. Like, are you being sat next to somebody that's uh, actively breathing COVID into the air? You know, so that would all be in my head and I wouldn't be able to enjoy myself. Okay. Is what I'm saying. All right. All right. Well, I've gone out. I don't know about you, Heather, but my wife and I have gone out and I've gone out. Uh, usually once a week we go, we try to sit outside, wow. you know, but I've, I don't know. I've I've lived a relatively normal life, all things considered. I have not uh, been going out that often. I have gone, you know, once or twice. Went to our friend uh, Ralph's place, Naked Taco. That, of course, was over the summer. So, yeah, yeah he, but that's yes. that's normal for me to not go out to eat that often. Maybe once every three months or something. So, I'm still living my normal life. Yes, it's just very okay. In other words, yeah, really. Else. Yeah. Come to think of it, exactly. You, you, Pandemic is my normal life. Yeah. Yeah. You were kind of ice, not isolated. That sounds wrong, but um, but accurate. not sheltered, but uh, self sheltered. There we go. Yes. By choice, <laughs> sheltered by choice. Naked I'm tacos. I'm like Shrek wow. in the sh Shrek in the swamp. That's me. There you go. Very nice. Yeah. Very very <laughs> nice. All right. I've kept you guys for an hour. I don't know about you, but when I worked early mornings, uh, it's nap time. And I see Heather looks like she's sipping on coffee. So it's, you, know, you go straight yeah. through, right, Heather? You don't nap. You go straight I till... do not take a nap. I, I go yeah. straight uh, through. I'll go to bed it. around 7.30, 8.30-ish tonight, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mike, you nap, right? Yeah, I love the nap. <laughs> Lay in bed with the dogs. It is, I've got uh, mine's barking right now just mentioning that. <laughs> oh. there, there she goes. Yeah, there the she best, goes. Though, every time I lay down for a nap and then my dog Moose puts his head here, my other dog Winnie's here, and I just lay back. I'm like, you know, there is no other place I'd rather be right now. The and dog feels the same way. Trust me. Uh, yeah. The best naps are the ones when you realize I don't have to set an alarm. And when I get up, maybe I'll get us some coffee and that's all I really have to do. And then I'll wing it from there. I used to hate the naps where you have to go immediately and do something. Yeah. Yeah. I like, really, I split my day into two. It's two different days. Cause you know, I'll yeah. wake up and recaffeinate myself much like I do in the morning, get it going again. And it's a long enough nap to where I really feel like it's segmented the day completely at the two different uh, periods, but it works. It's I made it, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into my Starbucks that's near me in the afternoon and said, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not making that up. I uh, believe. Hey, you. Dave, how are you? Oh, morning. Uh, um, you know, yeah, <laughs> because in my brain, I've, I've taken that nap and uh, I've woken up. Well, I've got animals. I've got a dog that wants attention as soon as the sunlight's out. And now we have the two cats who are on a feeding schedule. And that's my job. So feeding schedule is when they say it's feeding schedule and I will just get, I turn into a cat floor mat until I get up and feed them. Yep. And I can't, Absolutely. you know, I can't win. So I get up and feed them. They're happy. And then I start on the caffeination, caffeination, caffeinization, drinking coffee process. Anyway, I can't thank you both enough. It's great to see you. I know I've talked to you all on the radio again, and hopefully we can all do this again in person God, yeah, whenever Mike... Time? You were seeing you well, studio right after the new boss came in and decided he didn't want me around anymore. So that would have been my birthday <laughs> two years ago. I'm not sure yeah. that's how it went down. <laughs> I think that's how it went down. I do. <laughs> okay. I just I been, Mike, I Mike have I been back since? No. So <laughs> uh, I, you've been in studio. I remember when oh. you celebrated your birthday. That was it. That was the last time I was there. Like that two was the last ago. time. Yeah. And after wow. that is when, and he had just come down from Canada and, um, uh, I guess, you know, he changed some things around and, and I was one of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was such yeah. a whirlwind so, at the time. I'm not sure. Maybe I just missed that. It happened. But, yeah, but, well, you were uh, still new then too, Mike. Yeah. A lot of yeah, changes like said, at once there. Yeah, maybe I just Yeah, you were. It. You were. That's right. Yeah. Rob had left and uh, yeah, and uh, you, had, you had come in. And yeah, no, I, you, yeah. I had met, I've met you. I know that. But it, it's been 
it's been a while since I've been in the building. And from what I understand, it's been a while since a lot of people have been in that building, and hopefully that's going to change yeah, soon, too. Yeah, Paul just yeah. started coming back recently, really. Yeah. Coming in tomorrow. And then he went to Maine again, because why not? Because he can't. Am I the only one a little nervous yeah. that he's coming back in tomorrow after traveling, going to Maine, going out to dinner seemingly every night in Maine? But he's been he's been shot up. I think he and there's no way that Gina would let him do that without him being vaccinated. I guarantee right. you. But yeah. we still don't know if he's carrying, right? <laughs> well, then perhaps <laughs> you need to. Sh you know, there's. I'm sure there. If you go to Walmart, there's got to be a hazmat suit on sale, so you could probably grab one and just come in tomorrow yeah. like that. It'd be a great we bit. need to make him wear a mask in studio. Yes. Yeah. Only you, that. Paul. <laughs> Only you. Muzzled Paul. Yeah, oh, that's God. his fantasy. That's his <laughs> fantasy. Oh, boy. <laughs> and on that note, I'll let you guys go. We've been an hour, and I can't tell you how much fun it was talking to you. And again, uh, we'll do this again in person yes. without the microphone yeah. Oh, yeah. and the ring lights. It, it, was, it was wonderful. Thank you both very much. I really oh. do appreciate it. Thanks for oh, having thank us. Thank you. From Big 105 Nights, Paul Castronovo Show, Heather Nelson and Mike Anderson. That's your nooner and win an hour. That's good for me. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you. I'll see you Friday.